first Christmas ornament that I am making from junk is a lid off of a glass jar that I pulled out of the recycling bin. We're gonna turn this into a beautiful Christmas ornament with stuff that I already have in my craft room. I've drilled a hole in the top of the lid and now I'm gonna put a fringe around the outside. I cut a piece of string to go around the lid twice that size and then I cut a whole bunch of smaller pieces to create the fringe with and I'm just using a knot to attach it all to that twine. It's going to take a lot of those little pieces so I've cut a whole bunch and I'm going to attach them all onto that longer piece of twine until it goes all around the outside of that jar lid. I've got all those short pieces attached to that longer piece of twine fits around the outside of that lid. Now I'm just gonna cut them down so they're a little bit shorter and they're all the same length. I've got a piece of cardboard and I'm gonna trace out a circle the same size as the lid. But when we cut it out, we're gonna cut it out a little bit smaller so it'll fit on the inside of that lid. Now my lid was already black, but if yours is a different color and it has words or lettering on it, you can spray paint it with a spray paint that is a paint and primer in one. It'll adhere really well to that lid. Now I've got a piece of scrapbook paper that I printed Merry Christmas on. I sized it so it would fit right inside of that circle. And I'm gonna cut that out the same size as a piece of cardboard. All the graphics that I'm using in today's projects are available in my Etsy store. If you wanna grab them, I'll put the link down below in the description. Now we're going to put in the piece of cardboard and then we're also going to put in that piece of scrapbooking paper on top. Now I also forgot to show you, I put a piece of twine in the top and glued it down into that, drill, that hole that we drilled in the top. So it turned it into an ornament and we can hang it on our tree. Now I'm gonna add a piece of twine around the inside of that jar lid. It just finishes that off nice. And now we're ready to put the fringe all around the outside. Again, we're gonna use our hot glue gun and we're going to glue it around the outside of that lid. I think just adding that little extra touch of the fringe just makes it look a lot more beautiful. And this is what we created out of a jar lid from our recycling bin. Our next Christmas ornament made from just junk. These are actually slats from a shutter that was broken that I found in the dump. I saved all of the slats and we're gonna turn them into beautiful Christmas ornaments using Scrabble tiles. I had a game that was missing some parts. I had it tucked away and I knew today's project would be perfect to use some of these. I painted the slats with some homemade white chalk paint and then I distressed them all around the edges and then I just picked out some Christmas words and I spaced them evenly along those slats and glued them down with some hot glue. Now to make a hanger for these ornaments, I had a pair of flannel pajama pants that were ruined. So I washed them up and then I cut them into strips and they turn into great pieces of ribbon to use for your Christmas projects. I tied them on the top, added a little bit of greenery. Some I painted, some I didn't. These turned out absolutely beautiful and I love them and they're so easy to create. I love this upcycle. I had a whole bunch of really old clothespins on my clothesline that were not any good anymore. Uh, so I took them all off of my clothesline, collected them all up, took the spring out of them, and I had this snowflake that I picked up at the dollar store a long time ago, painted it with some blue acrylic paint, put on some Mod Podge, sprinkled it with some sparkle, and then I took those clothespins and I took two of them and hot glued them together, and I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these put together, and I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue and we're going to attach them in this pattern. I have them all glued together. We're gonna to add a hanger on the back. I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue and glue that piece of twine on. And I glued on my snowflake. And isn't this gorgeous? It has a real primitive feel that I absolutely love. If you've been following along, you know I have hordes of spindles that were given to me from a friend. So I'm always trying to find upcycles that I can use some of these spindles up. We're gonna make some Christmas ornaments with some of these pieces. I drilled a hole in the top 
and I also drilled a hole in the side to show you two different ways that you can do this. Painted it with some of my acrylic paint, chalk paint. I used a couple different colors, let it dry, and then I distressed it with a little bit of sandpaper. I had these circle eyelet uh, screws and I'm just screwing them in the top and if you want to get them really tight in there put the end of a paintbrush in there and twist it around it'll tighten it right up so it stays in really well and then I also had some old wire that was kind of rusty that I'm also going to add as uh, the top of this spindle I pushed each end through those holes that I drilled and I'm just going to fold them around and tuck them back into the drilled holes so we create a really pretty hanger this is another really simple DIY, and these actually sell really well for me over the Christmas holidays. So if you're looking for a way to make a little bit of extra cash and you have some spindles, put some of these ornaments together. I just put some twine through the other ones with the eyelets, and I just love, again, that primitive feel of these spindles. And what's even better is they were all given to me for free, and I was able to make some beautiful Christmas ornaments from just some junk. I had an old book that I picked up at a yard sale. It was damaged, the cover wasn't any good, but I tucked away the pages because I knew I would be able to put together a project with it. I'm going to make a template with a piece of computer paper. Now this is just a lid off of a shampoo jar. I'm using it because I'm not very good at freehand, so it just kind of gives me that ability to make a nice circle. So I'm gonna draw three circles along this piece of paper. And you can do any design that you like for this. And then I'm just gonna cut it out with a pair of scissors. And then we're going to put it onto our book pages and we're going to use this as a template to cut out a whole bunch of pieces. Now I've just taken out enough book pages that I know I can comfortably cut through. I'm gonna lay that template on top after that page is folded in half and cut those pieces out of the book page. Make sure you're using a sharp pair of scissors just cut around that template on the book page and we're going to need a whole bunch of these so we're going to cut this out and then we're going to get some more pages and do a whole lot because we want our ornament to be really full Okay, we have a whole bunch cut out. Now we're going to glue them together. I'm using a glue stick and you wanna make sure you're putting your glue stick right to the edges of the paper. You don't want it coming apart. And then we're gonna just stack up all of those pieces. And if you don't have an old book that you can use, you can use any sort of scrap paper that you have laying around and create beautiful ornaments. Okay, so I have them all glued together now. We're going to take the front piece and the back piece and we're going to glue that together. Again, making sure you're using lots of glue stick. You can also use Mod Podge or any other type of glue that you have and get it right out to the edge. Press those two together really well and make sure that they're really glued down nice and tight. Now we're going to give this a little bit of a honeycomb effect. I've got my hot glue gun and I'm putting a dot of glue at the top circle and a, top, a dot of glue at the bottom circle. And then we're going to flip over to the next section and put a dot on the middle circle. And we're gonna alternate back and forth until we've done every page. Once we have them all glued together, you can see that it's starting to take shape and it's just gorgeous. We're gonna add a little bit of ribbon in the top and some greenery and we've created a really beautiful Christmas ornament with free pages that I had out of an old book. And like I said before, you can use any type of paper to make this ornament. Next DIY is so much fun and this is a great one to do with kids. We're back to the clothes pins again. We're gonna take the spring out and then we're gonna glue those two pieces together with the hot glue gun. Now I'm gonna make two of these adorable ornaments. I got out my acrylic paint and I'm gonna completely paint them in white. And then I got my black acrylic paint and I'm using the end of my paintbrush. I've dipped it in the black paint and we're going to put two dots on the top of those clothes pins. I'm not very good at freehand, so this is a great little trick if you aren't either. And then I'm gonna put three dots along the bottom of those clothes pins.
I took a piece of wire, I put a little twist in the top of it, and I put the wire through that little hole in the middle, twisting it around again there, and just kind of play with it until it looks nice. Now we're gonna use that flannel again that I used from those pair of pajamas and I ripped them into ribbon. And we're just going to tie a little piece around the neck of our snowman. And that's it to create really adorable snowman ornaments that are fantastic to do with your kids. It's such an easy DIY. And how cute will these look hung from your Christmas tree? Next project, I'm using some scrap MDF or press board. I actually get this at my Home Depot. They have a bin where you can pick up scrap pieces of wood and it's all free. So I always grab it when I see it because it can you can always use it to turn it into ornaments. I'm gonna do my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. You've seen me do this lots. I've printed off these graphics on my laser jet printer using Mod Podge and I've sized them for each of these pieces of wood. If you make these graphics yourself, you have to make sure that you reverse the text or when you do this technique, your lettering will be backwards. All of these graphics are available in my Etsy store. And again, I'll put the link down below in the description and you can grab them if you wanna make some of these for yourself. I let these sit overnight. It's been 24 hours. I'm taking a little rag with a little bit of water on them, dampening it so you can just start to see the graphics show through. And then we're gonna rub off all the paper and the graphics are going to be left on your ornaments. These are perfect to hang on your tree, but you can also add them to your gifts as little tags and you can write names on the back. So many possibilities. Now I've got all the paper rubbed off. We're gonna seal them up with some water-based polyurethane and they're ready to hang on our tree or to attach to a gift. I hope you've enjoyed all of today's Christmas ornaments that I've made with stuff that I've already had around my house and out of junk. If you have been to the store and bought a card lately, you will know how expensive they are. So I always love making my own to save a little bit of money. Plus I think people appreciate a homemade card more than a store bought in one. I'm gonna show you today how I'm making my Christmas cards this season. And I've designed some graphics and card and envelope templates which are available in my Etsy store. I've taken some of my favorite Christmas graphics and turned them into greeting cards. The first card that I'm making is on some scrapbook paper that I've coffee stained. And I've printed off my greeting card template on the first piece of scrapbooking paper. I've just cut it down to a size of computer paper and then put it through my printer and printed off the card template. And then I just fold it in half after I've printed it off on the template and you have a greeting card ready to go. Um, I'll have the link down below in the description to my Etsy store so you can have a look at these cards and pick out your favorite ones and try these DIYs. Now I need to make the envelope for the card. So I have my envelope template and I'm cutting it out and then I'm gonna put it on top of another piece of scrapbooking paper cut out my card and then fold along all of those lines from the template. And you can print off this card template and envelope template as many times as you want, make as many cards as you want, and just get creative with different types of paper and materials, putting these greeting cards together. And you can see you just fold along those lines. And when we're all finished, that greeting card that we made will fit right in that envelope. using a bone folder it just makes everything lay a lot better if you can press it down and make a nice crisp line and this crafting glue for paper DIYs fantastic I'm just gonna add a little bit along the edge of that envelope template fold it together and we're all finished I'm gonna age the edges a little bit. I've got some ink and I'm just going to brush it along just to kind of give it that rustic feel. And then the envelope, you can write the name on the front of it, put your card in, add a little uh, note for your receiver, and you've got a Christmas card all ready to go. Affordable card that you can put together with your kids 
and somebody will really love getting it. Now, if you wanna seal it up, I just like using my glue stick. Just put a little bit of glue stick along the edge and it will fold right up. Now, we're gonna take that envelope template again. I had this piece of sheet music in my scrap paper. We're gonna turn that into an envelope and then you can put a little gift card in it if you would like or you can put another greeting card in it and easy way to create a one-of-a-kind envelope. You can also add these to your junk journaling, scrapbooking, or your mixed media projects also. For this one, I just left the template on that sheet music and folded along the lines of the template, and it just made it easier to know exactly where to fold it. Got out my bone folder, made some nice crisp lines, then you can take it all apart and your envelope is ready to put together with a little bit of glue. Now I've got some coffee stained lined paper. I'm gonna turn this into a greeting card. Using my envelope template, I'm folding it all in, taking it apart, then I'm gonna glue it, and we've got your, our envelope ready, and now I'm going to print off a greeting card from one of my graphics, cut around the lines where it needs to be cut, and it's ready to put into our envelope, add a little Christmas note to it, Put some glue stick along the top or you can put a little sticker or even if you have some wax seals that would be beautiful and here's another idea that you can do with some of these greeting cards i have one napkin and one piece of computer paper i'm going to take that napkin down to one ply i want that top ply where the pattern of the poinsettias are and we're going to save the white piece because i always turn them into custom napkins we're going to get some saran wrap or cling wrap and rip off a piece a little bit bigger than the sheet of computer paper. Cutting around the edges so we don't have too much hanging off. And then we're going to, when we're all finished cutting it out, get that one ply of napkin and lay it on top of that saran wrap, making sure that it's nice and even on that piece of computer paper. Put some parchment paper over top of it and then I'm gonna iron it on my highest setting with no steam and that cling wrap is going to melt into the napkin and into that paper and bond to it and we've created a beautiful piece of paper that we can turn into an envelope or a greeting card. I'm laying my envelope template in the middle of that paper and I'm cutting around the lines and when we're all finished, we're gonna be able to put this envelope together that's gonna to have the beautiful pattern from the napkin on a piece of paper. And how beautiful is that? We're gonna fold it up, use our bone folder, some glue. I'm actually putting the pattern on the outside, but you can also do it on the inside if you want to mail this. And you'd have the, the poinsettia on the inside and the white on the outside. Print it off my greeting card and you can put that inside. You've got an affordable Christmas card that you've made yourself that somebody would love to get. Now, if you've been following along, you saw that I did some faux homemade paper. I love this, it's gorgeous, and it turns into beautiful paper. We're gonna turn that into a greeting card, cutting out my envelope template on that faux handmade paper, folding it all up, print it off a card on some coffee stained paper, and we've got a DIY Christmas card put together and it's beautiful and like i said before all of these templates for the cards and the envelopes are available in my etsy store i'll put the link down below in the description you can check them out you can make as many as you want you can give them as gifts you can put some together and sell them whatever you would like to do with these templates is perfect i've set it up in my etsy store so you can just buy the envelope template or you can buy the greeting card and envelope template together. Have a look around, see what you like, and then you can get crafting with these. And I've taken all of the hard work of the measuring and what size you need and put them all together. So now I had all the scrap pieces left over from when I cut, I don't get rid of any of that. I have this tag punch. So I cut a lot of the extra little bits and pieces into tags that we can 
add to our Christmas gifts or you can set aside and add to birthday anniversary gifts or add to your DIYs. I never throw out any of my fancy paper. I use up as much as I can. I'm actually going to put some tags together with some of the scrapbooking paper and the faux homemade paper and glue some of them together, punch some holes in the top, add some twine and we've created beautiful hang tags. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and I've inspired you to make some of your own DIY Christmas cards. I've got a whole collection of goodies here from either the thrift store or the dollar store and I'm going to put together a really fun hot chocolate basket. This is going to make a fantastic gift for Christmas. And I'm just gonna show you some of the stuff that I've got that I'm gonna to put together in the basket. I picked up these little spoons um, at the dollar store, Dollarama, they were $3.50, some candy canes, a nice fluffy pair of gloves. I picked up a scarf at the thrift store. I've washed it, it's nice and clean and pressed. And I also picked up this basket at the thrift store. I've got some hot chocolate, I've got some cookies, some marshmallows, some little bags and a cookie jar that I picked up at the dollar store, some vintage mugs that I picked up at the thrift store, and this adorable little mug I picked up at the thrift store for 49 cents. And I've also got a piece of wood that I'm going to put a sign on. So let's get started and put this basket together. I've just got a scrap piece of wood. It's just a piece of pine, painted it with my homemade stain in brown, and then I put a coat of my white homemade chalk paint on top and this is the graphic that I designed hot chocolate served here this is the graphic and I had to print it out reversed to do the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer that's the type of sign that I'm going to make so I'm going to do the Mod Podge reverse graphic if you've been following along you know that I love that way to make signs reversed it regular computer paper and I'm just going to put on just a light coat over the whole graphic and then we're gonna set it aside, let it sit overnight and dry. And then once it's dry the next day, we're gonna rub the paper off and we're gonna be left with the fantastic hot chocolate sign. The sign has sat overnight. I'm just gonna take a little rag with some water and just dampen it so you can just start to see the graphics show through. And then we're gonna rub off the paper. It's all finished and I just sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer. It's ready to go into our basket. This is a graphic that I'm going to use to put on my cookie jar. Um, all these graphics that I'm using today are available in my Etsy store. If you go down to the description at the end of the video, you can click on the link and you can check them out and make sure you use the code SAVE50 because you can get 50% off all of my graphics in my Etsy store and I have all kinds of really cute Christmas ones. I'm going to send this to my Explore 3 and get cutting it so I can put it on my cookie jar. I got the graphics all done on the cookie jar and the lettering at the bottom was a little bit too small to read so I cut that out and I just used this portion and the flourish and I'm going to fill it up with a couple cookies. I think these are going to make perfect hot chocolate mugs. Um, they're vintage from the thrift store. They were I think 75 cents each um, and I love them. This is a graphic that I'm gonna use on the mugs, uh, hot chocolate. I've put it in my design space and now I'm gonna send it to my Explore 3 cutter and get them cut and put them on the mugs. So I've taken just a plain, boring, vintage mug and I think it's adorable now. So make sure if you're out in the thrift stores you look for those old mugs that maybe don't have a lot of character until you put a graphic on it. 
Now this cute little mug, I'm gonna turn it into a candle. Um, I'm gonna put a really cute little snowflake on the front and I'm gonna take it outside and spray paint it black. I've picked out a little snowflake graphic. I've put it in design space and I'm going to send it to my Cricut to cut it for my little candle that I'm going to make. I got the little cup all spray painted black and this is just perfect. The votive fits right in there for a little candle and I cut a little snowflake on my Cricut to put on the front of the mug. I'm just gonna put the little snowflake on, just center it right where I want it. And it's gonna look so cute in that little basket with all the hot chocolate goodies. Peel off the transfer tape. Look at that, a little candle. Holder. Now we're ready to put everything all together. I'm going to take the scarf and just kind of drape it so it looks nice and pretty in the basket. And then I'm going to add the cookie jar. And we've got these, our hot chocolate mugs. I'm going to take a couple of these packets that I bought at the dollar store and add them into the hot chocolate mug. And then one of the little spoons that I picked up and just kind of set it in the little mug. Oh, I didn't realize we've got four in there so I can do some another project. I thought there was only two. We're gonna add another little mug, put a couple more of the hot chocolate packets in that with a little spoon. We're gonna tuck in the little gloves, the nice feathery gloves that'll be nice and cozy to drink your hot chocolate with and maybe just nestle it in behind. I'm going to add a couple candy canes in each mug and I think that finishes off the mugs really cute. I'm going to add my little votive candle right in here. And I'm gonna tuck my sign in behind the little cookies. Just tuck it in there behind the gloves. That looks really cute. And to finish it off, we're gonna add some marshmallows. I picked up these little cookie bags and I thought they'd be perfect. I don't wanna put a whole bag of marshmallows in the basket. I just wanna put a couple. So I'm gonna take one of these bags and I'm just gonna add four marshmallows. So, and I, who wants little marshmallows? You always want the big ones. Put them in the bag so they'll look nice and pretty. And then I got a little bit of twine and I'm just gonna tie a piece of twine at the top. Just tie a knot. And then I'm gonna cut off the extra cellophane at the top. So you have a cute little bag of marshmallows and you can add that in your little basket too. And there you have a perfect Christmas gift, really affordable, that anybody can do. I just love making these gift baskets and I added up all the costs to make the basket and it came to about $22 but I have leftover hot chocolate, I have leftover marshmallows, I have leftover cookies, I have two leftover spoons, leftover candy canes. So I have enough to make another couple baskets and I think it is perfect to give to a grandma, a teacher, um, friends, and it's so easy to do. If you like this graphic, you can also grab it in my Etsy store and make a sign for yourself. Another DIY that I love to give as a gift are my scrap wood signs. If you've been following along here for a while, you know that I love making these and they make perfect affordable Christmas gifts. I've printed off this graphic on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text and I'm just using a scrap piece of wood that I've painted with some homemade chalk paint. Making sure that the graphic is exactly where I want it, making sure there's no bubbles and wrinkles and then setting it aside for 24 hours. Then I'm dampening it with a little bit of water 
and then rubbing off the paper and the graphics are gonna be left on our scrap piece of wood. These make perfect little stocking stuffers or you can add them into another gift to finish it off. This is another DIY that I love to do at Christmas time, making personalized ornaments with air dry clay. You're gonna need a couple wooden slats, a couple pieces of wire, and I've got some parchment paper. We're gonna get out our air dry clay. I love using these wooden slats because when you put them beside your air dry clay when you're rolling, it makes sure that it's even all the way across. I just pick up my air dry clay at the dollar store and it works really well for me. Once I have it all rolled, I have a mason jar lid and I'm cutting out a circle. We want to have a nice smooth edge around that circle so I just dip my finger in a little bit of water and smooth it out. Now those little pieces of wire they're going to turn into a hanger so I've just poked them through the top of that circle and I'm going to make four of these. Now I've set them aside and I'm going to let them dry and it takes usually overnight depending on your heat and humidity. Now that they're all dry, I'm painting them with some of my black homemade chalk paint, letting them dry, and then putting some white homemade chalk paint on top of that. I've printed off some photos and some quotes on my laser jet printer, and I'm just tracing around my circles. I have a picture of my mom and dad, and my son and his wife, and a couple quotes. Now, just like we did our signs, you can also do the same transfer method onto air dry clay when it's dry. We're going to put that on to our ornament exactly where we want it, get out any bubbles and wrinkles, and then set it aside and let it dry for 24 hours. Now once we've gotten all the paper rubbed off, I'm just gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and just give it a rustic feel all around the edges, seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer, add a ribbon on the top, and we've made really cute, adorable, personalized ornaments with some air dry clay that are affordable gifts. going to upcycle this old VHS cassette holder. The tape was missing so we're going to work with the paper insert from inside. I'm going to cut the spine away from the front and the back. I'm sure at some point you've had a VHS cassette holder where the tape was missing and you just ended up throwing it out. I'm going to show you how you can create a beautiful gift with these paper inserts. So now I've got the three pieces cut out. We are going to get our page protector. I picked this up at the dollar store. It's just clear film and I'm going to cut it to size and cover the front and the back pieces. If you don't have any of this page protector, you can also use packing tape and just layer it across the top and then trim around the edges. Once I have everything covered with the page protector, this middle spine piece is gonna turn into a little bookmark. So I've cut some scrapbooking paper to glue onto the back of that, and we're going to put it all together.
Now, once we have everything all covered with that page protector, we're gonna turn this into a little journal. I have just recently bought this spiral book binder uh, off of Amazon. Absolutely love it. I am turning everything into little notebooks and journals and junk journals. I'll put the link down below in the description for this one that I have. The possibilities are endless for making paper projects with this. So I've just cut the holes in it for the spiral to go through. And I have this little corner punch that I like to use. It just finishes off the edges really nice and rounds them. We're gonna use some lined paper for this project. I had some left over in a binder and we're just gonna cut it to size to fit in between these two pieces from the VHS cassette covers. And once I had them cut to size, I put them in the punch and put the holes in for the spiral binder for it also. Now we're ready to put it all together, but first we're going to turn that middle spine into a bookmark. I have a brad, we're going to place it in the top, and I just, I thought I wanted it a little bit shorter, so I cut off the Grinch. We'll keep that for another project. Added the brad and a little piece of ribbon, and now we're ready to put the spiral binding in this little journal. It After the holes are punched, it just spirals right through. So easy, and you've created a journal in a couple easy steps. Trim off the ends with a little pair of pliers. And we have created a beautiful journal from a VHS cassette holder that was missing the tape. My daughter is absolutely going to love this. Now we have the clamshell case left over. We're gonna upcycle it. I'm gonna cut a piece of paper the same width as the clamshell and we're going to print on it. I put it through my printer and printed this beautiful graphic. The graphic's available in my Etsy store. If you wanna grab it, I'll put the link down below in the description. Because we had to cut it the same size as a sheet of paper, it didn't quite fit to the end. So I cut another little strip to put in there and it matched up perfectly and we wouldn't even know that it was too short. So now we have a clamshell container that you can fill with little trinkets or a little gift and it's an original one-of-a-kind gift box that I'm sure somebody would love to receive. So we have upcycled that VHS container into a little journal, a bookmark, and a little gift box to give to someone for Christmas. Round wooden circle that I had in my stash forever and we're going to paint it with some black Let chalk it dry paint. completely and then we're gonna put some candle wax around the outside. I love this candle wax distressing technique. It just creates chippy old looking wood. Then I'm gonna put on some green acrylic paint, some more candle wax, some red, some more candle wax, and then finish it off with some white. Dry it, scrape away at it, and you're left with this beautiful vintage looking painted surface. Now I want this circle to be raised up a little bit. So I've got this piece of two by four. We're gonna glue it to the bottom of that wooden circle and then paint everything black underneath. Now I'm gonna add my graphic to this using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. Printing this off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse it and then adding it onto the circle, letting it sit for 24 hours and then dampening it with a little bit of paper. Rubbing off the paper, we've got a beautiful graphic that we can leave out for Santa so he can have a cookie, some carrots for his reindeer set out. Now I'm gonna put two little handles on either side and I'm gonna glue them on with some E6000. And this is a cute little tray that we've created to put out on Christmas Eve for Santa. Dollar store tray and a couple things that I picked up at the thrift store. Breaking out my Cricut for this, we're putting on some permanent vinyl on these pieces and we're gonna clean everything up with some rubbing alcohol and then apply the graphics. For the little bowl, I've gotten this carrot graphic. We're going to lay it right on the front and then make sure we've got it pressed down really well. Peel off that transfer tape and then we have carrots left on our little bowl. Then we're gonna add milk 
onto a little cup and same thing the transfer tape rub it pull the transfer tape away and then we're going to add a cookies graphic on this little cookie container and for the tray i printed off a merry christmas on the and then take the transfer tape off and we have that left on the tray and we have another different idea to leave treats out for santa on christmas eve <music> 